when I'm able to start drawing on my social security, that's when I'll be able to relax, <laughs> said no one ever. Right. What's worse is that many people don't know that they may have to pay taxes on their social security payments in retirement and three times taxes if they escape the country and live abroad. So how do taxes affect social security payments? Well, you're listening to Crim Money episode number 486. And today we're sharing everything you need to know about this topic to accurately plan for retirement. Now on with the show. Capital One Auto Navigator does more than just auto financing. We're here to help you find a car you love too. Shop millions of cars from thousands of dealers nationwide. Research your favorite makes and models. Explore dealers near you and more. All on Auto Navigator. So, John, I'm going to jump in here. I, I, I feel like uh, this, I know it's going to be getting back up on a bike, but we haven't recorded a podcast episode in over two weeks and I feel rusty. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's your knee's fault. Your knee's rusty. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dave is having knee problems, so we haven't been able to record as consistently <laughs> as we, we usually do. So, we just thought, what better topic to cover on our return is... Death and taxes. Right. The only two certainties in life, right? Death and taxes. Oh, well, no, I think there's another certainty. What's that? <laughs> That's my love for you Aww. and your love for me. All right. Now that all of our <laughs> listeners and viewers are vomiting <laughs> over their steering wheels. And right. So let's treadmills. Talk, right. <laughs> let's talk about being queer and paying taxes. No, there isn't a huge chasm between being queer and non-queer and paying taxes. But it is interesting that uh, in 2016, the LGBTQ financial experience survey that was done by Prudential found that 49% of LGBT folks who responded to their survey said that marriage equality actually simplified their financial lives because, in part, it made paying and filing taxes easier. Right. And so if Justice Alito and Thomas get their way, it's going to get harder all over again. No. Man. And if you're concerned about marriage equality becoming no longer equal, um, listen to Queer Money episode number 472. We talk about ways to prepare for marriage unequality becoming yeah. the law of the land. And 2022 and 2023, we partnered with The Motley Fool to do The Motley Fool Debt Free Guys LGBTQ plus money study. And in that study of the 2,000 people responded, just 39% of folks said that they were comfortable doing their own taxes. So we know that taxes are a complicated and concerning issue for folks in the LGBT community. And as we know, and we discussed back on episode 472, just because you retire doesn't mean filing taxes gets easier. Nope. <laughs> so well, Sam is still hovering around. Let's talk a little bit about this whole idea of taxes and paying social or getting social security payments. Of course. So yeah, let's set a baseline here. So a recap of social security details and eligibility. You must have worked and earned enough credits through the social security uh, system to be able to qualify for benefits. And that's currently 40 hours. I'm sorry, that's currently 40 credits, which equates to about 10 years of work. And of course, this is as of the recording of this episode. Yeah, I think that there's a minimum you have to earn something like five, It's I think it's somewhere between five and $6,000 um, per year in order to get your four credits for each year. Um, if you don't earn that much, then you get less credits than the four all the way down to zero. Right. Um, also, uh, it it is interesting that in some states, some state employees, which includes teachers and municipal workers, they don't actually get Social Security. Um, their reason for this is because of what are called Social Security offsets. There are two of them, the windfall elimination provision and the government pro pension offset provision. Both of those were put into place to make sure that folks who are not paying into the social security system are not drawing money out. And that is the case with these states. Some of these states is that their employer, the state, does not pull out of their check social security. And so they're not making payments into the system. So they don't get to withdraw money from the system. Exactly. So if you want to learn more about that, you think you might fall into that category, definitely check out episode 113 of the Queer Money Podcast. 
And then, of course, one of the biggest benefits for LGBTQ plus people are um, survivor and spousal benefits. That's one of the other benefits that comes with marriage equality. Um, and we encourage, and that's why we encourage a lot of LGBTQ plus people to get married because these uh, survivor benefits survivor benefits specifically can really, really have a drastic improvement on your financial security. So check out episode uh, 54 of the Queer Money podcast when we talked with David Freitag from Mass Mutual. Um, so uh, you want to definitely check that out, but also check out episode 314 because uh, for those who would have gotten married but couldn't get married because the law didn't allow for it, um, the Social Security Administration made some changes a, a few years back that if you can prove that you would have otherwise gotten married if it was legal, then you could still qualify for survivor benefits. And there was a New York Times article that sort of was the impetus for us covering that episode or recording that episode. And there were some people who were getting one-time payments of, of, of up to $60,000 and then an additional several thousand dollars each year thereafter for the rest of their lives because they of this new change uh, it, to the um, filing requirements for Social Security survivor benefits. So definitely check out that episode. Yeah. And then, of course, as we all know, you must reach full retirement age to receive your full benefits, which... Currently, that age ranges 66 to 67 years old for individuals who are born after 1943. Of course, you can claim benefits beforehand, but you'll get a reduction in your monthly benefits. You can wait until after you reach full retirement age and get an increase in your monthly benefits. Um, but studies do show that if you wait too long, you don't get as much money over your lifetime um, because, you know, you die. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the important things to remember about uh, your retirement benefits is that it's not just social security where you're getting your money from, or for most folks, it's not just social security. There are other sources of income. So when you're thinking about your taxes in retirement, it's important to try to think about a smart strategy when you're taking money out. So for example, um, if you have a traditional IRA or you have a 401k that has been converted into a, an IRA and you're withdrawing money from those accounts to live on in retirement, when you do that, when you take that money out of those accounts, you have an option to prepay a portion of your taxes when you do that. Oftentimes the recommended amount is 10%, but you can take an amount lower or higher than that. But typically they're going to ask you that. Do you want to withhold 10%? I think that's actually one of the one of the questions on one of, on uh, withdrawal forms is do you want to withhold at 10% or or, uh, or another amount? The important thing to think to remember about this is that in some cases, some people are going to be withdrawing, in some cases, thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars when they uh, uh, are pulling their money out. And when they do that, if you're going to pay 10% or 20% or higher, you're going to pull this money out, you might as well not send it to Uncle Sam and allow them to earn interest on it. Pull that money out become a smart tax filer and set that money aside yourself. So one of the bet, one of the places that we would of course recommend you set up your tax sinking fund. We have a tax sinking fund every year for our taxes so we can pay our taxes on a, a quarterly and annual basis, but we recommend of course that you open a Capital One 360 account. Part in part because it has those best available rates, right? Some of the best available rates. So if you're withholding thousands or tens of thousands of dollars and you have that sitting in a savings account, you may be earning your, yourself hundreds or even potentially thousands of dollars on that money that's sitting there while it's waiting to be paid on your taxes. So again, we love uh, Capital One's 360 accounts because they're easy to open. You can do that on your phone or uh, your computer in a few minutes. And they continue to support the LGBT community in many, many ways. More about we will talk about later on this year on the podcast. Exactly. If you're not sure what a sinking fund is, if you need more of an explanation of that, definitely check out Queer Money Podcast episode number 452. Lots of resources for people today in this episode. So, yeah. David, let's get to the meat of the conversation. Yeah. So, Social Security benefits and taxes in retirement. Let's combine these two, right? So social security benefits may be subject to federal income tax depending on your total income in retirement. Remember your social security benefits are a portion of your income, but the portion of your benefits that is subject to tax depends on the combination of your income that includes your adjusted gross income, 
which we know your adjusted gross income is your income minus any deductions that you qualify for. It also includes things like non-taxable interest and in some cases, half of your social security benefits. And the taxation on social security benefits, um, all of this started back in 1983 with the Jeez, Gipper. who did that? Yeah, the no, man- No, but he lowered everybody's taxes. Except for retirees. Except for old people. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we don't care about old people. <laughs> There's some other things that will affect your income in retirement, some other sources of income. So we know that not everyone, when they retire, quits working completely. Some people continue working full-time. Some keep people part-time. Uh, some people start a business of their own. So they, you might have self-employment income. You may have in, uh, in, income from pensions or investments. investments. Yeah, exactly. So there's all, all of those kinds of things can add to what it is you're actually earning in retirement. Uh, and so any of these can also help increase the amount of taxation that will happen on your social security benefits. Compl <laughs> complicated way of saying exactly. that. Of course, likewise, what will also affect how much you have to pay in taxes, if you have any to pay at all, is how you file your taxes. So the tax filing options are single, married filing jointly, married filing separately. That is an option that David does not have. I do not do not have. <laughs> <laughs> so couples who, marry, who are married and file jointly, may actually have a higher threshold for taxation for social security benefits compared to single filers. And we're going to talk a little bit about those thresholds here right now. All right. So the thresholds are really designed here to give you a breakdown of knowing kind of approximately how much of your social security benefits are going to be taxed. So if you are uh, as an individual single person are earning between twenty five and thirty four thousand dollars after we've added up all of the different sources of income and taken all the deductions, if you are earning between twenty five and thirty four thousand dollars, or if you're a married person and as a couple, you are earning between thirty two and forty four thousand dollars, then up to fifty percent of your social security tax uh, social security benefits would be subject to federal taxes. If you, on the other hand, are earning over thirty four thousand as a single person and over forty four thousand as a married couple, then up to eighty five percent of your social security benefits may be subject to uh, federal taxes. Um, but keep in mind for individuals with a combined income that is below these thresholds, then you will not have any, not be subject to any federal income tax. I think it's important to remember here that these numbers are relatively low. We're talking about individuals who are bringing home three, four thousand dollars a month. And that's not a significant amount of money in retirement, uh, especially with healthcare costs and uh, just the lifestyle that you want to live or the amount of money that you have been able to save. Um, it is likely that you're going to see, you're going to be taxed at some portion. Exactly. And the tax rate that you're charged is based on the portion of your social security benefits subject to taxes included in your taxable income and tax at your marginal tax rate. That's how that will affect out. Yeah. So how do we minimize our taxes, David? Yeah. So again, this kind of goes back to that whole idea of being smart, uh, being a smart tax filer. Um, when, when you are withdrawing funds from your various accounts, you want to make sure you're coordinating these to, to see, and this is where it's helpful to have a financial advisor who also knows and works with your accountant. It's important to have those two individuals having some sort of communication, especially for higher income earners. You want to make sure that you're, you're pulling money out in a way that will help reduce or prevent you from being pushed into higher tax brackets. So whether it's your wages and wanting to keep those under control, how much you decide to withdraw from a, uh, a, a taxable investment account or whether you decide to sell certain stocks at a loss. All of those are kinds of things that can help to minimize or optimize your tax efficiency when you're taking distributions or you're earning income in retirement. 
Exactly. And timing your distributions from retirement accounts can really have a positive or negative effect on how much you're going to pay in taxes. So that's where it's really beneficial to have your financial planner, financial advisor, and your accountant to be BFFs. Exactly. I think especially, you know, we talked about this idea of having a sinking fund for your taxes. Um, when you withdraw your money from your 401k or your retirement accounts, where you will have to pay tax on that, it may make sense to do that early in the year so that the portion you will hold aside in that sinking fund account has a longer time period before you have to pay your tax bill to actually earn some interest on it. Otherwise, if you're going to take that money out later in the year, it may make sense to almost leave it all the way up until like the last, last week, right? The <laughs> last week of December, especially if you're trying to get that, the, keep that money earning uh, in uh, uh, interest or earning while it's in the market. Please do us a favor and don't call your financial planner or your accountant on New Year's Eve. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not on New Year's Eve. I said the last week of December. But you know what? I I will say a lot of financial lot. advisors are like, sayonara, we'll see you after Christmas, or I mean, after New Year's. Um, the week before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's also, it's important to be clear that we've been talking about taxes at the federal level. Uh, this does not include so far anything, anything about the state level taxes. There are some states that also uh, charge uh, tax who do, who, that do also tax social security payments. Not all those 10 states currently include Colorado, Connecticut, Kansas, Minnesota, Montana, New Mexico, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, and West Virginia. Um, and that, of course, could change at a moment's notice. So it's all, always incumbent upon you to be uh, clear about what's, what the laws are in your state or rely on your accountant who will likely uh, be up to speed on that information as well. And yeah. the thresholds and the taxation requirements are different for each state. So that's not really something that we could cover on this particular episode. And that's, again, why you might want to talk to your accountant. Yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, I was just listening to the podcast, Where Do Gays Retire? And uh, Mark was interviewing a, uh, a gay man um, who he and his husband retired in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And on that episode, he said that he, they did their research and they moved. part of the reason why they moved to New Mexico was because they wouldn't pay taxes on Social Security. And it was interesting when we when this uh, came up, we looked at the information and for New Mexico, the threshold is that after your adjusted gross income has to be a hundred thousand dollars or more. So evidently that couple um, are earning below that threshold and they're not going to have to pay any taxes. So again, it says you, th these states, you do have to pay taxes, but a lot of them do have thresholds where you won't. So you definitely want to check them out if you're trying to pick a place to retire. And we know that New Mexico is becoming a hot spot for LGBT folks to retire in. Exactly. And if you're planning on leaving the country for greener pastures and trying to avoid taxes on your Social Security, don't go to Canada, <laughs> United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Japan, South Korea, France, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium, Austria, Norway, or even Portugal. Because all of those countries also charge taxes on United States social security income payments. Yeah. So the varying degrees, right. It depends. Some of them charge it as income earned in that country. Some of them just require you to make uh, a taxable payment based on the amount that you've earned in the United States. Exactly. So. And a lot of this, this all is contingent on whether or not these countries have treaties or certain treaties with the United States and whatnot. Um, it's relatively new for Portugal to start charging taxes on United States social security income. Um, a lot of people were going to Portugal to escape some of that as well. But apparently Portugal's like, you guys are costing cracking. us a lot of money. They're cracking so down. We're going to start charging you. <laughs> so again, the broad caveat over this entire episode though is uh, federal and state taxes laws will change all the time. Um, and so the information that we share today could be outdated within a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Uh, so please talk with an accountant or a tax professional and coordinate them with your financial planner to make sure that you're paying your taxes appropriately. But just know that you could be charged on your social security income in retirement um, and at the federal and the state level. And those uh, requirements may be different based on where you are and what your income level is. So talk to your accountant and then stay tuned for your crib money takeaway from this episode. Start your journey to financial independence with a checking and savings account that doesn't nickel and dime you with fees. Get a Capital One 360 checking or a 360 performance savings account at Capital One today.
Thank you for joining us for another episode. Get your Queer Money takeaway from this episode in this week's newsletter, as well as links to all of the resources that we mentioned in this episode. Then join us this Thursday when we share our personal biggest surprises from the most affordable LGBTQ plus friendly city series over the last year or so. And next Tuesday when we talk again about LGBTQ plus money. Thank you and have a great week. Oh,